2024 keeps delivering huge AI wins, and this morning was no different. So this morning I got up, and the first thing I saw on Twitter was that Mistral had just announced another model. So this is different from Mistral Next. This is something they're calling Mistral Large. They're saying it's their largest model yet. The idea here isn't to be fast, it's to be concise and have the greatest reasoning and logic abilities that we've seen from Mistral yet. So how can you use this model right now? Is it actually better than Mistral? 8x7b and Mistral Next to some extent. We're going to get into all of that in this video. Welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So today a few different developers from Mistral released on Twitter that they had released something big and this is Mistral Large. So I'm going to go from what uh, Julian Lampu put here and uh, he says today we are releasing Mistral Large. Our latest model Mistral Large is vastly superior to Mistral Medium which is the biggest model from Mistral we've had access to prior. It handles 32,000 tokens of context and is natively fluent in English, French, Spanish, German and Italian. So clearly they're sticking to the European roots here. We've also updated Mistral Small in our API to a model that is significantly better and faster than Mistral 8x7b, which is really interesting. Lastly, we are introducing Le Chat, which, and with every Mistral release, it would go without saying that their sense of humor never lets us down, and the way that they're actually releasing this for people to use and mess around with is through a new interface called Le Chat, or chat.mistral.ai, a chat interface currently in beta on top of a few other models. Really quick, there are a few interesting things to note here, which is the general performance that they've measured here. And they don't really mention exactly what this is coming from, but at a high level across a number of benchmarks, Mistral Large is roughly equivalent to what Cloud2 can do in terms of reasoning. They're claiming it's better than Gemini Pro, GPT 3.5, and Llama 270B. And I guess they've decided to not compare it to Gemini 1.5 because we all know there have been some issues there, even if it can manage to refactor your entire code base. The other thing that's quite interesting is it does really well across all of the languages they've added support for. Some models will just haphazardly add support, and if they claim to really support these languages outside of English, the logical reasoning capability within these languages will suffer quite substantially. What's cool is that doesn't seem to be the case with Mistral Large. And we're going to try out Lay Chat a little bit later, but I do want to go through Mistral's actual release. So this is the release on their website, and what they show here is Mistral Large is our flagship model with top tier reasoning capabilities. And again, reasoning capabilities are really what they're pushing here. And they also show that it's available in Azure AI, which is funny since Microsoft owns ChatGPT and you'd think they've been giving them all of the compute they have, but interesting nonetheless. So they describe Mistral Large as their cutting edge text generation model. It reaches top tier reasoning capabilities, can be used for complex multilingual reasoning tasks, including understanding, transformation, and code generation. And they show here that Mistral, again, achieves strong results on commonly used benchmarks. They give us some more details here as to which were actually used. One of the key ones was MMLU, one developed by Google. And what's interesting is they sp make a few specific callouts here in terms of its new capabilities and strengths. So they mention here that it's natively fluent in English, French, Spanish, German, and Italian, which is pretty cool. And they mentioned here that uh, a nuanced understanding of grammar is what they were going with, especially with cultural context, which Again, we know Gemini 1.5 kind of had some issues with. The biggest thing for me with this model is the 32,000 tokens context window. So obviously it's not as big as the context window shown by Google with Gemini 1.5. But what's cool is this is in a more usable model in my opinion. Um, it's one that you can manipulate, you could actually mess around with. Another big one here is precise instruction following, which enables developers to design their moderation policies we used it to set up the system level moderation of lay chat. So I think this is a cool way of exposing better ways for developers to moderate their models. Right now, the black box that, for instance, Gemini 1.5 flows into before it gives you kind of these wild manipulated answers, it's really hard to see. And we know that a lot of Mistral's models have been striking the balance of moderation and openness really about as well as you could. Really similar to how well Stability AI has done this with generative AI in, in terms of, you know, not restricting them too much, but making sure people aren't doing like completely insane, bizarre things with them. And a really cool thing to see is having function calling being a native ability right out of the box without fine tuning or tuning of any kind. They say here, this along with constrained output mode implemented on La Platform, which is basically the um, compute platform that Mistral runs internally. So of course it's called La Platform. Uh, enables application development and tech stack modernization at scale. Then they mention um, a bunch of interesting stuff that they're doing with Microsoft, which frankly, I don't find very interesting. Here is where they break down their benchmarks a little bit further. 
So they're comparing Mistral largest performance to the other top leading LLM models on commonly used benchmarks. So the biggest here are MMLU, Hella Swag, and then ARC C525 and Truthful QA. So what's interesting to me is GPT-4 is still winning out in most cases. So in terms of MMLU, Hella Swag, and Y0G, GPT-4 is still winning, but it's curious to see how close Mr. Large actually is, especially for eventually likely being an open model. Now, they're clearly big on intra-language um, tasks like translation or reasoning between languages. But what's interesting is they haven't forgotten maths and coding as being a core element of their model. So sometimes if we see language models that are very capable, we'll see that their reasoning and kind of coding abilities suffer because translating a lot of what those reasoning tasks mean in different languages can add a lot of noise. But what's interesting here is Mistral Large is still much more capable than Llama 270B across multiple benchmarks. And in certain cases is actually within around 5 to 10% of what Gemini Pro 1.0 was capable of. And I personally would argue that Gemini Pro 1.0 is better than GPT-4 when it comes to coding ability. Uh, unfortunately, we have good benchmarks to show this, but we're going to have to wait a little bit longer to see if these are really improving performance in a lot of ways. To really see if these are truly performing uh, the logical reasoning performance, specifically in coding and math. So a really interesting element of this that isn't Mistral Large that I think is kind of cool is actually how they've drastically increased the ability and the efficiency of Mistral Small. So Mistral Small for the longest time was kind of poised to be this model that was similar to like a GPT 3.5 Turbo in that it was supposed to be really fast, really affordable to run if you were doing inference on top, and basically just be as capable as um, a Mistral 8x7B. And what's crazy is now they've enhanced this to the point that they're calling it even more capable than Mr. 8 by 7 b and great for doing things like uh, function calling, a uh, RAG enablement, and a whole lot of other things that otherwise would have been kind of more expensive to do with Mistral 8 by 7 b So what's cool here is they're saying here that uh, they have open weight endpoints with competitive pricing. They have uh, new optimized model endpoints, so with re even really specific versions of Mistral Small and Mistral Large. And another big one is JSON format and function calling. So for a while in 2023, the notion of actually having LLMs communicate in JSON was seen as kind of a challenge. And what's cool is nowadays that's pretty common. And JSON, for those of you who don't know, is just a, it's a markup language for text and data. Uh, it's a really basic way to structure data in a raw text format that you can serialize. So basically turn into a string and then, you know, and then turn back into a data structure. And what's cool is this is right out of the box and you can use it with function calling right out of the box, which I think is pretty awesome. So let's jump into actually using this model. So first off, you have to either make an account or log in with Microsoft or Google credentials to late chat. I have already logged into late chat. And uh, what's really great with Mistral is, of course, dark mode of late chat is called late chat noir. It's just, you know, I, I love Mistral for this reason. So we've selected large. And another really interesting thing that can give you a lot of insight into why Mistral builds things certain ways is Right here, so so large is obviously for top reasoning capabilities. Next is still a prototype model with extra concision, and small is fast and cost effective. So they've actually bypassed you know running eight by seven B here for the time being, and this is in beta, so a lot of this might change. So let's see what we can do here. So I'm just going to say here, um, I'm visiting Italy as an English speaker. So we're requesting this in Italian. We're requesting kind of a instruct-like task. So we're saying I need a list and I need some rough form of instruction of how to do that. Now, it obviously got that. Let's see if, okay, cool. So this is interesting. So it gave us the list in English because it knows we are an English speaker and it gave all of the ingredients or the things in the list actually in Italian. So ideally we could walk around and find those things. If I'm having trouble finding black pepper, how would I ask someone in this store? And let's see if it understands that I want an Italian free. Oh, and it got it. There we go. Oh wow, and it actually also gives us the pronunciation. So I guess that's one of the cultural aspects they're talking about. So that's really cool. Uh, this is actually far better than GPT-4 when I've asked it for more complex translation tasks or conversationally um, complex tasks. So 
Interesting. All right, that actually worked really well. Now, something I also like to try here uh, are kind of word problems. So we're gonna test out the reasoning abilities here with uh, a word problem about an Italian man selling onions. And it's all in euros, it's all in kilograms, so I think they'll understand what we're doing here. And I know what the answer to this is, but let's see if it gives us the right answer. So, yes, so the first time we, uh, we bought for 200, sold for 300, so that's 100. And then we bought for 400 and bought for 600. So, yep, yeah, got it right, that's uh, 300 euros. So, clearly the rough or like high level math ability here is actually not that bad and it's quite capable. Now, one that's quite hard that will actually test some of just the um, visual reasoning for math, so kind of like a, a number line-esque problem, is, let me do this here. So, I've asked this before of other models. Let's see if it works. All right, this looks pretty good. This is actually something that I've done before, and what's cool is it actually came up with a more clever answer from the last one I used, since now it actually understands what an LRU cache is, which is quite niche and actually hard to do, even if you're implementing as, a, as just a human. So, wow, that's actually really, really cool. I'm impressed. You know, they, people were saying on Twitter that the coding ability of um, Le Chat for Mr. Large actually wasn't that great, but this is actually quite contrary. And I will say the code I got from this is much more concise than I got from previous either coding models or resultant models that do coding. Um, one of the models that I meant, that I previously reviewed that did a bunch of merges um, gave me the right answer with a much more complex implementation. But this is a great example of how more capable models that just have more parameters in certain cases are generally better because they give you more concise output with less noise. And that isn't always the case. Obviously, that's skirting over a lot of computer science behind this. But, um, but yeah, basically to say better models that think more deeply or that are better at reasoning, in my opinion, are better at coding because they don't have to reach as far to solve harder problems that otherwise would be quite challenging. E in certain cases, even challenging for people. So I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, are you going to start using Mistral Large over some other models? Do you think it's really better than Llama 2 and GPT-4? I will actually say that I think this is better than GPT-4 at coding. GPT-4 is great for little quick things, like things that I'd rather not go to, say, um, Stack Overflow to find. Um, granted, I prefer to use Perplexity for this kind of thing. But yeah, this is actually really impressive. Always, uh, I'm, I'm really never not impressed when I see releases from Mistral. I like that their releases are metered, they seem to really understand what these models are good at and maybe not so good at, or which areas of the model are more kind of in beta than others. I think this is, in my opinion, more impressive than Gemini 1.5. Sure, Gemini 1.5 can pull out, you know, a single line of a movie that I fed into it, but this, in my opinion, is more useful and much more cool to see because even when you compare Mistral to the size of Google, Mistral is still a team of less than 100 people. And to think that they have much less compute and they've still been able to achieve this, it's really impressive and I hope they keep working to make everything they do much better. So, again, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, please use Le Chat Noir. Le Chat Noir. Uh, let me know in the comments what you put in, what you gave you. And yeah, as always, I hope you learned something in this video. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. It helps us out a ton. And we'll see you in the next one.